It is my uh, great pleasure and privilege to have Dr. Michael Sheehan here, a clinical psychologist who's been a co-parenting educator for divorcing parents for years and years, as well as someone who's worked with many families to help uh, the parents to get their focus on their kids and mm -hmm. relationships in the future, rather than the fight and their rights in the past right. uh, when they're separating. And I wanted to introduce a topic, uh, Michael, that I call the subjectivity of it all, the subjectivity right. of it all, which is that mom is having her view of the divorce and, and dad's having his view of the divorce and the kids may be an entirely, in fact, almost certainly a completely different view of it. And let me begin by throwing out uh, something that Donald Saposnik talks about in his book on mediating child custody cases, and that is how parents can look at the same event and come to some uh, completely different conclusions, and both of them are probably wrong. But the, one of the examples he gives, and he has a number in his book, is a child who comes back from maybe two days with dad, mm -hmm. and uh, 20 minutes later, mom finds Junior up in his bedroom crying. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, she goes to her lawyer, the lawyer files a motion, uh, because the problem obviously was that he went with dad, and, according to mom and mom's mm -hmm. attorney, and so they file right. a motion that dad's parenting time must be severely limited. Dad and his attorney see this and say, wait a minute, the child was absolutely fine. Obviously the child doesn't want to be with his mother. I had the most fabulous three days with Junior, right. and right. so mother's time needs to be limited and maybe she should have only supervised parenting time twice a month for an right. hour and a half, and right. uh, we need right. to watch her too because she must be right. doing something wrong. Right. When in fact, as Donald Saposnik points out, you know what, the child has his own experience, and you know what it is? He's living between two worlds and he would oh, like yeah. to have that right. wholeness, right. but both parents have come to completely separate and right. completely mistaken conclusions. Us human beings are first and foremost creatures of meaning, always. Say so what that, you mean by that. Uh, well, we observe an event and out of that event we have a meaning. So if uh, I look out my window and I see this huge ape putting his hand through the window, I'm scared. But if I've been told that Dino De Laurentiis is making a movie and I get to be an extra <laughs> and I get to sit there now, uh, now I'm not scared, now I'm excited, I'm a part of the movie. Different the, meaning, the, different diff feeling. Same situation, different meaning because a little bit different piece of information. Mm -hmm. And that the reason uh, folks get divorces in the first place is a breakdown in communication and their ability to convey their meaning accurately to their partner and sort it out and work it out and, uh, and create a harmonious relationship. So you already come into it with these two people with two different sets of of meaning, okay? Now, you go to an actual situation where the, uh, the kid is on a, we, for example, we used to do supervised visitation and we had the super visit, supervised visitation with these three little kids one time. They went off with dad, they uh, went to the lake, they had a great visit, they had a great time. At one point during the visit, dad reached back and slapped one of them on the leg, tell him to quiet down in the back seat, okay? That was one minute out of a whole uh, day-long visitation. Well, when those kids get back home to mom that night, they get out of the car and the first thing they say to mom is, Dad hit me. How the visit go? Dad hit me. What do you mean, Dad hit you? Why did Dad hit you? What's the matter with him? Well, now why does that kid tell mom, Dad hit me? A kid wants mom's approval. Children want the approval of their parents. They're going to tell their parents what they want to hear. The parent is going to hear that as accurate information, uh, that this is the, the main event of the, of the parenting time. And no, it was a minor one-second thing that meant nothing. Uh, but it got blown up because the child interpreted that's the meaning my mom would like to have out of this, and I want my mom's approval. And I was just going to ask about that. Wouldn't you say that if the child perceives the parents as being in conflict, in order to bond with either parent, they're telling the one parent one thing, one parent another. That's right. I, I, that's I, right. I feel loved and valued, that's and this right. is wonderful that's with you, right. the worst, and I feel terrible over The there. worst case I ever had of that is a kid that went home and told biological mom, I hate my stepmom, she's the wicked witch of the West, I don't want to go anymore. And then went and told stepmom, I hate my mom, I want you to adopt me. Yes. And yes. both parents were at war, had lawyered up, and yes. neither one of them knew what the kid was saying to the other. And when they found out, you know what they wanted to do, Charlie? They wanted to punish the kid. I know that one of the themes that you talk about, Michael, and I do as well, working with parents, is that asking children can be asking for trouble. It's one thing for in a in a safe setting with a psychologist for the child to have help to say what's really on his mind. 
but when parents, you know, start asking, or we as custody examiners and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. lawyers and stuff start saying, well, let's ask the kids. Number one, the kids can't tell the truth because this is not a safe world. I need to tell everybody right. what they want to hear. That's right. And and what they really want, they, what they really would like, is to have peace break out between the parents. But that's divorce is a very subjective experience. One way I, mm -hmm. I, I, and I don't know if you ever think of it this this way, is I we try to encourage parents to think, you know, a year, two years from now, I'll be looking back at this and saying, you know, I grew from this bitter, bitter, difficult experience. Mm -hmm. That isn't the way it feels right now. Today it just feels all horrible right. and bitter and there's right. no growth. There's nothing redemptive about it. But what can I do today right. that when I look back on it in two years, I can say when it's looked very desperate to me and horrible, mm -hmm. I did these things that I could be proud of. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know what? In the long run, in my own divorce, I really believe that the way Mary and I handled ourselves earned the respect of my children. Sure. I mean, my children see other kids go through divorce, they see other kids fight, and not that we didn't have our moments, because we did. I think the difference is both Mary and I were committed to quick recoveries from making stupid mistakes. Everybody, psychologist included, are going to make mistakes. The difference between happy, healthy people and unhappy, unhealthy people is happy people recover from their mistakes, learn from their mistakes, and grow from their mistakes. Unhappy, miserable people defend their mistakes, and when you defend your mistake, you're stuck in it. Thank you, Michael, for uh, discussing the subjectivity at all. I think we have to be careful. And by the way, I think professionals have to be careful. The, there's a tendency on the part of us lawyers to hear a story from a client, and then we think, well, that's absolutely the truth, too. These are very, very painful, personal, subjective experiences. Let's all ask parents and as professionals remember that and do the best we can to create a better world not to argue our view of what's going on right. now.